excuse me. Stop burping. <laughs> Re- reverse alphabetical. I've been out before we started. I didn't really hear that. Maybe Sorry. this is the cold opening. We didn't even plan it. You just burped. <laughs> I drank that coke way too quick. Welcome to Remix Roulette, the podcast which is not a remix or a game of roulette, really. And this is our second ever episode in the history of the universe. And if you haven't joined us already, roll one. When we're rolling our dice, we pick the decade. Roll two, we pick the genre. And with roll three, we pick the twist, which can be anything from changing the accent you're singing into mashing up two songs. This week, we've got the usual family, which is uh, Mr. Dan Smith, Mr. C. Quinn, and we also have a special guest in the form of Al Strefford Kane. Woo! Welcome, everybody. Yo. Woo! Hello. How are we all doing? Good. Good. All good. Thank you. Yeah. Great, I love it when people just say good, because I'm like, well, what am I supposed to say? How, how, are, you? how are you? How are you? How are you, Mikey? Great. Are you all right? <laughs> you know what? I'm all right. It's been a, an interesting few weeks with us getting the podcast online and figuring out all the little bits, but as of right now, you'll be listening to this and you'll notice that it's on all major platforms. Or what was the phrase you used before, Dan? Your... I thought that's what I said, wasn't it? Oh, I'm sure you said something else. No, you, it was you that said the better phrase. What did I say? I said that one, didn't I? <laughs> your... Your platform of choice. Oh, Ooh, okay. That oh. sounds so professional, doesn't it? The platform of choice. Platform's a good word. Yeah. It's so vague, but it sounds clever. <laughs> I think platform sounds like pedestal as well, in a way. I feel like it's just on this, like, plinth, like, ah, like in a Zelda game, and you're going to grab the, like, Master Sword or something. I don't know why that's what I think of, but just, <laughs> oh. platform, plinth. Okay, anyway, then. so, last time we were here together, we uh, had an... 80s mashup of two songs from that decade with a country or folk twist and it was um it was surprising it was good fun and i think we can all admit that uh steve's song has been in our heads a little too much even before we started recording we were all singing those lines in that country twang of yours weren't we <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, man. i'm so sorry <laughs> Don't be sorry. It was great. And that's the fun of this. I mean, I mentioned earlier today to the guys, um, the guys being Dan and Steve, <laughs> that when we've been sort of prepping for this, I've completely forgotten that we even have the whole, you know, cover song idea simply because, I don't know, there's just, I just, it's just nice to hang out and chat. And I forget that actually there's a purpose to this and that we're going to listen to these cool songs. Yeah. Listening to the songs. Yeah. I'm dead excited about the songs as well. And it's cool that we've got a guest as well. I'm a, we have. It makes me happy. Woo. Would you like to, uh, Introduce yourselves virtually with your voice. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, what else are we going to use? <laughs> Just do interpretive dance instead. That'd be. Let's all ask you one question to try and unravel who you are to our lovely listeners. It sounds like one of those like icebreaker exercises. Oh yeah. Or not? Work. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh god. Like, what, what's your special skill? Or um... yeah, name three things you take to a desert island. Two truths and a lie. That sort of thing. Actually, that's quite a good one. Gone. Three things you take oh, to God. Desert Island. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> She's on the spot here. <laughs> I know. We didn't um, plan this a, either. A solar power generator. Wow. Smart. Um, a phone. Right. Uh, and a charger. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. Need. And then that way I can just call somebody and be like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was doing this podcast and suddenly I'm on a deserted <laughs> island. <laughs> can you come save me? <laughs> Smart know. answers, smart answers. A, f- a 5G mast. No, no, I wouldn't say that. Um. <laughs> For a bit of context uh, then, without going into too much detail, um, I'm trying to think of it. So myself, Dan and Steve went to uni together. I then started uh, a musical project and then it became a band in which Dan and Steve joined in. Dan worked with L, introduced L to Steve. Steve and L started the band. Steve then left our band and that's kind of where we're up to right now. <laughs> and uh, and L works with Mikey, so we were all like... Oh, oh yeah. yeah, and then L yeah. also works with me now, which yeah. I forgot yeah. to mention. So, yeah. We're all linked somehow. It's, uh, yeah, it's quite cute. Yeah. This is our origin story, which is... Yeah. It is cute. It is really nice. You're also a very talented musician, L, as we know. And you know what? This t-shirt, I know people can't see the shirt, but this black shirt... It always reminds me of that Michael Jackson cover we did for work. And I'm not going to say anything else about it because I don't need to. <laughs> and I like that mystery that people would be like, what are you on about? You made a Michael Jackson cover for work. And, uh, do you know what, Mikey, as well? You actually ins- inspired me to do so many more covers for work as well. So. Oh, you did that pineapple pen one. I did a, yeah, yeah, I did. Oh, I, get, yeah. I guess you anyway, had to be there. 
<laughs> yeah, you did. Sorry, this is that work banter, isn't it? And people are like, stop it. When you go to a party and people only talk about work, and yeah. you're just like, what's going on? It's the worst, that. And it's just, yeah, I'm sorry. I do it all the time. I've done it with <laughs> everyone in this group, I think, at some point. So, yeah, apologies. But anyway, point is, Al, you're a talented musician. You're a lovely pal and friend and lady. And we're glad to have you on board. She's, so welcome. She is a great singer, too. A really, really good singer. Yeah. <laughs> to be I fair, I, Steve always, when we'd have, like, uh, our sort of old band practice and stuff, Steve would always say how great you were at coming up with, like, lyrics and melodies, like, really easily. Oh, you, I don't know if I've ever said that, that but <laughs> some lovely year, feedback for you there, yeah. yeah. Well, well, I think that's, you know, it's it's, it's lovely to hear. Thank you very We're much. T- talking about you in, in secret. <laughs> I miss it. One day. I miss writing. One day, Elle. Yeah. yeah. One, One day. day we'll hold our own remix roulette festival and all these covers can... Oh, my God, that's a really cool idea, actually. All and these none covers of the lyrics can be played. will be ours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give us money for songs that we did not write. Yeah. Fantastic idea. Well, we're here for a, a specific reason, and that's to listen to the songs that we uh, set you last time, didn't we? Yeah. Any any reminders on what these uh, are? I've genuinely just forgotten as of that moment. You've forgotten what we did. <laughs> Roll One was the 90s, which Steve and I were dead excited about. Um, because, yeah. yeah, we're 90s kids, obviously. It's... Uh, yeah. So, no so that, would, that, really. that was that was pick a song from the nineties yeah. to cover. Uh, Roll two, uh, we had to cover that in a pop style, which is not really a genre, but I guess yeah, pop style is uh, something easy to consume. I suppose digest. Uh, it would get played on the radio if it was good. Um, <laughs> Um, and then the last rule. This is probably going to be one of my favourite rules in the whole podcast as we do this: the change tonality one was where you got to change it from a major key to a minor key or vice versa um so like a happy song to a sad song as mikey put it yes and that's that's what i'm it's like i find quite funny about my one i can't wait to play yeah. it. yeah that is i will i will say that has been a challenge for me i've been it took me ages it took me a few days to come up with a song that i was like I, w- I need to change the tonality but i don't know whether to do minor to major major to minor sad to happy whatever um but I settled on one in the end Yes, I'm very intrigued. And I think the best way to get rid of this curiosity and intrigueness is to dive right in. We can do that. Have you got any clues for what it might be, Steve? Yeah. So I've got a few clues here. I've got three clues for you. And if you want to make a guess, we can reveal after we've heard the songs um, to see if you were correct or not. Uh, if you want to play along, if you want to play at home, play along at home as well. Uh, feel free, you know, jot something down. <laughs> Get a pen and paper out. Crowd participation, yeah. <laughs> While you're sat on the bus listening. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we, you don't want to say it out loud because you don't want to like, spoil like the the impact of it coming in. So just like remember it. Right, okay. So the first clue that you have is this song was originally performed by a British band. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. The, se- the second clue is the original song clocks in at only two minutes and one second. Ooh, that extra second might be very valuable. Who knows? It could be. This is the original song I'm on about, though, so, you know. Oh, because, like, there's a very famous song by a British band from the 90s that is only two minutes long, but it's two minutes exactly. Ah, well, it could be the same one. Mm. I mean... <laughs> uh, we'll see. I'd love it if it was. The third clue is, despite the song's title... This band had more than two songs. It is that song. Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. I've no idea. <laughs> yeah. Why am I completely in the dark on yeah, this? I know exactly Mikey what it know. is, 100%. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's such a banger. Oh, I'm so excited anyway, I can't now. Wait. Actually, <laughs> go on then, let's play, so it. Let's play it. Let's play it. I think I do. I think I, I kind of want to check. No, why am I going to check? That's going to ruin it for me. Okay. No, I think I know what it is. Here we go. So this is a Steve's surprise cover of episode two in three, two, one. me 
meet ya. thought that was exactly two <laughs> minutes long that's why i thought it wasn't that long at first ah jesus christ <laughs> <laughs> amazing right. so there you go that's that where do we begin where do we begin uh <laughs> that sounds like it must have been quite hard to change into a major key yeah like my mine i literally changed one note and it suddenly it sounds like major but that was like you gotta well, rethink the whole chord progression that was it. Yeah, I wanted to totally reimagine it and make it go from a minor key to a major key in a really obvious way. So I had to, you know, that I had to write that in a new a new chord structure. It, and everything. it was like, it's perfect. I like, like the like band yeah. filter on it that sounds like the actual intro and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Oh, in case people don't know at home, that song was uh, Song 2 by Blur. Be- before we dissect the cover a little bit more, shall I tell you what I thought it was? Because I was completely wrong, which is really funny. Oh, yeah. So I'm guessing, Dan and Elle, you both guessed it was Song 2. Yeah. Well, I was thinking, you, the clue, what was the clue? It was something like, they've had, what was it, sorry? British band, the song's only two minutes and one second, and despite the song title, this band had more than two songs. Wow, okay. So even though you said British, despite the first clue, when you said the um, more than two songs, etc. Yeah. For some reason, the first song that popped in my head was One by Foo Fighters. Oh, right. Mm. Yeah. But they're not British. Why did I think that? They're not British. <laughs> they are not British. I don't understand. I was like, ooh, Foo Fighters. Okay, interesting. It's funny It's funny you say that, because I was considering Everlong by Foo Fighters at one point. Uh, very uh, 90s song, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, when that... Honestly, I only got it when that initial riff dropped in. Mm. And yeah, I think there were so many sort of like pop cliches, if you will. Not like necessarily sort of the modern day pop that we get in the chart now, but just something I would consider pop. Do you know what I mean? It sounded very, um, it sounded very McFly to me. Oh, did it? The style I was going for was kind of a bit 2010 sort of, uh, I don't know, Kesha sort of, yeah. that kind of cheesy pop mixed with a bit of uh, 1975 as well. Oh, with the, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with it. the like scrapey, scrapey strat tones and things like that. Dude. Yeah, all that sort of so stuff. Good. I loved it. Yeah, it was. It just fit really well. I love this podcast. It's so great to hear how you all just. It's such a great idea. Honestly, I just love it. I love how it's just. It blows. It genuinely blows my mind seeing how everyone interprets these in a, a different way. You know, it's it's incredible. I was thinking like this week, I've I've put way more production in. It's like I can get to level of Steve's, and then I hear Steve's production. I'm like, ah, oh, no, I just, <laughs> I just can't get near that. It's so good. <laughs> Oh, wicked, 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 wicked. What was it that made you choose that song specifically then? Was it because it's a great song or was it because it would be easy to transform? It's something I wanted to make. If I was going to do a pop song, it had to be a cheesy pop song in a major key and I, and I wasn't having anything else. I couldn't be, I couldn't make a sad song. So it was finding a song that wasn't a pop song from the 90s, like a, like a rock song. I was considering some sort of pop punk ones and stuff, but a lot of them are all in, are all happy sounding. So I tried to find something that was in that mm. minor key that I could um, sort of, 
transposed, I don't know if that's the right word, but um, make into something incredibly cheesy. And that just happened to be a good one that, that worked. Yeah, I absolutely loved it. It was great. Cheers, Dan. It was great. It's it's like cheesy, but not like... It is cheesy. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> it is, but like... <laughs> it is, but like, not... I don't think it's like too cheesy. Maybe that's just me. Like, if that came on in like a 90s club or something, I'd be like, yeah. And I'd be like, I'd be down for it. I don't know why a nineties club because it's a a tenties pop song. Yeah, I feel like that song would be on like a now that's what I call music for kids album or something <laughs> it is a like, bit that. like that. Definitely. Like kids pop. Um, oh yeah. yeah, good though. I really enjoyed Maybe it. Maybe that's my market. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Well done. We were all. It's a shame you couldn't see what we were doing because we were all genuinely smiles across our faces the entire time, dancing along. I tried to start a screen recording, but I couldn't find the button. But if anyone else did, it'd be great to watch back. I just did a little boomerang, although I don't think Elle was looking, but it's fine. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of Elle, hello. Right. Hi. Would you, would you like to... Uh... Hey, Elle. Hey, Elle. Whenever you talk, I imagine you're going to do a country <laughs> fan now. It's just, it's just oh. stuck. <laughs> hey, Elle. Hello, Elle. Um, do, you have some, uh, do you have some clues for us, perhaps? I do have some clues. I first of all, I just want to Ooh. say, I, I, pop is such a varied genre. Like, it was so hard to actually pick a piece of pop. So um, I my three clues are um, it's by a country artist who won a Grammy for oh, it. Oh, right. It's a song that always gets everybody up dancing. And the artist's surname is the same surname as a very famous author. I know what it is. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I knew what it was before you what? said that last one. And I was like, I know she's going to say the author, isn't she? Uh, <laughs> Huh. Country artist oh, won a Grammy gets everyone dancing. This song, it's it's caused a lot of debate whether this particular song is country, but the artist is country. Yeah. I mean, it could be a number of songs by this artist, but yeah. I know what I want it to be. be. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. I have an idea and I, I can't wait for like, you know, three or four minutes time where I say, hey, guys, guess what I thought it was? And I'm completely <laughs> off the mark again. I'm so excited. That's probably going to be a running theme, isn't it? Where I get it completely wrong. But um, there's like only one thing sprung to mind, actually, which is interesting because I think it's probably wrong. But <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Mikey's thinking Jay-Z. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> He, d- he does live in a country, so... I mean, he does. He's probably won a Grammy for a song in the 90s, let's be honest. Are you uh, ready for us to have a listen? I'm so ready for you guys to have a listen. <laughs> I've got it buffered already. Oh, yeah. Let's have a look. Oh, our first ever guest on Remix Roulette. Um, how shall I be introducing you? Can I use your full name? Because yeah. I keep doing that with everyone. You keep calling us Mr. Dan and Mr. Steve, and it just makes me think of... Um, Sam of Lord of the Rings. You can call me Mr. L. I don't mind. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that. I don't know what it is. But um, okay, so then a uh, little countdown before we listen to uh, L's track of episode two of Remix Roulette. And this is in three, two, one. I don't want to be free. Yeah, feel the way I feel. Man.
uh, uh, go totally crazy Forget I'm a lady, man, shirt, short skirts I go really wild, doing it in style I get the action, get the attraction Come my head, do what I dare Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh oh my god. I would yeah, that was absolutely oh my god. incredible. I, wow. I'm um, absolutely blown away. That was amazing, Al. That was so good. If if you couldn't tell, I had so much fun with that, but I also like I said before, <laughs> I found it really hard to place pop and what oh, pop yeah. was. I mean that So I chose that, modern pop. So there it, was Ariana Grande in there, there was a little mix in there, there was um a little bit of yeah. Billie Eilish the, in there, a little uh, bit of whack well. kind of stuff. Um <laughs> oh, but yeah, I just kinda I love yeah. the tempo changes and stuff. That was Yeah, so that, good. that was so fun to do that go totally crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that was so cool. Yeah, there was definitely some Billie Eilish in there. Um, a lot of yeah, a lot of modern, modern pop. It was so cool. The the um, four minuted you know pitch down vocals as well. You did. Mm. Oh, well, yeah. that, mm. that was also me going like because <laughs> 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 I didn't know how to like change it so that it was more rounded. So I pitched it down, but then I also went to, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, with my voice. That's um, so funny. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed doing that. Um, I don't know whether you noticed the do 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 in the chorus. Oh, in a minor key. Which is the guitar line at the beginning of the original song. Is I it? think I did, yeah. I'll listen, I'll listen back, back and, and try and spot that. Incredible incredible work. That was amazing. I got up out of my chair at one point when that when that <laughs> when that tempo <laughs> changed <laughs> in, I just didn't uh, blew me away. Oh my god. Amazing. <laughs> Dan just put us to shame. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm chuffed that I did in fact think it was Shania Twain because when I think 90s and I think country like that was the first name that came to my head so I'm glad I actually got one right that's good and when we were listening to it and you explained before it's literally what you just mentioned you know like oh how do I place pop it's a big genre and as soon as it came on I was like ah I see why you said that now and it is like you know those influences of like Ariana and stuff like that and I completely got all that before you said that so yeah, I think you've completely nailed exactly what you wanted to. I think that was fantastic. I don't think it matters at all that the original could be considered a pop song. It's fine. You no, changed no, it no, dramatically. No, it's to- <laughs> totally different. In- like incredibly different. I um I really couldn't remember a name. I knew I could I knew who it was in my head who I was thinking of beforehand. I just couldn't think of the name, so I ended up putting because I know um, L really likes these. I put Counting Crows. <laughs> uh, you know yeah. a song that's like, <laughs> that song that's like, don't it author, always um, seem to go that you don't know. That's go. 2000s though, isn't it? Oh, is it? I, I thought yeah. it'd be like, yeah. I would have said Counting Crows were 2000s, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I was really wrong then. Cheryl Crow is 90s. <laughs> oh, is she a yeah. famous author? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, David Crows, don't you know him? Oh, man. That was fantastic. Very well done. Again, Thank you very much. this is why this podcast is so good. I think... I love that it just gives you guys a, a nice challenge. And it, in a way, when you're put into a certain box, it kind of makes it easier to be productive or creative, I think. It's like, these are your limits. You need to do something with this. And you're like, right, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah, that's true of any art form, isn't it? So much. It makes everything yeah. like happen. Makes it very special. Have we um, actually said what that song was? I don't think we have, actually. Um, that was Man, I Feel Like a Woman, wasn't it? By it was. uh, Shania Twain. Yeah. yeah. Oh. It was. The country goddess. She was like, she's like, I was going to say the queen of country, but she's mm. not, because I guess that would be Dolly Parton, but she's like the... She's the queen of modern country, I would say. But what's Taylor Swift then? Is Taylor Swift still a country artist? And Alanis Morissette, there's many people who could take that, but she won her second Grammy for that song. So. It's a pretty good song. That's mad, isn't it? As if she won a Grammy for that. She won another Grammy for that Don't Impress Me Much, I think. Like, I've genuinely listened to her, like from choice not just like oh it's on in the background like i've purposely put her on a few times because i I do actually like a bit of shania Same. so i was a nice a nice little thing to hear yeah i didn't expect that but it was absolutely fantastic why did you choose that song then that's gonna be my question i grew up with shania twain so i was very like you guys probably earlier 90s and i was very late 90s so i right, grew thanks. up with shania twain <laughs> way to make us feel old <laughs> 
I mean, influence. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was Shania Twain that I had her album. I had like the double deluxe edition of her album. Um, I just listened to that album so much, but I always loved that particular song. So yeah, I just thought if I had to pick any of the songs that she's done, I had to pick that That's one. That's the just funniest to. one. Such so, a good song. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought it would be really, really funny to give it that kind of like... In a way, it was kind of like a sexy twist in a way to That's make exactly it minor. exactly what I was going to say, yeah. It's such an upbeat song, though. It's so upbeat and happy, the song. And that's why it's yeah. so funny to hear it. <laughs> and now it's like, man, I feel yeah. like a woman. Why are they male? <laughs> you've, really, you've really, like, sort of given it that, like, strong, independent, like, 10s, 20s, you know, R&B pop, like, female singer, like, your Cardi B or Ariana yep. Grande. That's like, what I was going for. It's like, you've nailed it completely. I'm so impressed. Like, wowza, 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 wowza. Well, heck, heck, heck. Very, very well done. Thank you for joining us. That was absolutely perfect. When we uh, rolled the dice last week afterwards, we were like, oh, who should we ask? Who can we get to do a pop song? And we were like, yeah, Elle should come and do a, should come and do a pop song. So thank you very much, because that was perfect. Absolutely perfection. Cheers, Elle. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. However, however, we have uh, one final delicious dish tonight. I don't know why I've gone for a, a food theme when nice. it's a remix roulette podcast and yeah, uh, hungry there, we don't have remixes or roulettes. You know what? I could do with some dessert, but anyway, that's besides the point. You're sweet enough already, Mr. Dan Smith. Thank you. Aww. What are your clues, my friend? So, well, I, mine's kind of the opposite of Elle's in that I've I've picked a really dark, menacing song and I've made it really <laughs> jolly. Um, <laughs> so, it. Uh, this song was uh, uh, released in November 1996. And it reached uh, number one in the UK. It charted in a lot of other countries. I mean, that's a very... Uh, <laughs> thankfully, I've got my encyclopedia <laughs> of release dates here. I mean, the thing is, that's quite surprising given like what song it is. Because my clue number two was that it's it's a dark and menacing song. It's a dance song. So it's a bit of like electronic music. Oh. Um, so I've changed it from minor to major. My third clue... This, I don't think anyone's going to get it from this. It's a really obscure one. I had to go on Wikipedia. Um, the the uh, original song contained samples from Thin Lizzy and also from the Wu-Tang Clan. Oh, that's completely thrown me off now. For mine, I well, obviously, like we were saying before, pop is not really a genre. It's just like a idea, really. So I've gone for like pop rock. So I think <laughs> it's it's a bit of kind of like a, I think like Hanson. You know, I love how you said pop is a. It's more of an idea, and I was like, someone in the world will have a philosophy. That sounded way pop deeper than philosophy. it was meant to. It was meant to just be like it's not a genre. It's like a category. It did. <laughs> it's uh, it's relative to the to that time, isn't it? Right. Are we ready? I am so ready. I mean, I'm ready. I've written down three artists which it could be, and they're all wrong. But it's going to be funny when we reveal them. Later. I mean, oh, one other thing I'll say is. The previous version of this, you could recognise it within the first, like, tenth of a second because I pulled a sample from the original intro and then I thought, I'm a little bit scared of copyright strikes, so I just recreated it. And I think it's close enough that you can still tell. What could but, it uh, be? I'm going to say, I have absolutely no idea. No, I, I have don't. No idea. I really hope you know it, but yeah. <laughs> it's Like I said, it's massive. It's an absolute classic, the original. And I've absolutely ruined it. So. <laughs> I imagine the uh, original artist has a lot of influences then. Is that something yes, we can hear in the original track so. or I in your track? So the original artist is it's kind of convergent of different genres anyway. Anyway. Ooh. Oh sorry, this is I way too I, many clues. I've just I've just no, I've just figured out what, what art it is yeah. it is. Should we listen? Purely from that. Yeah. Oh my god, of course it is. Right, okay. I mean, I say that if I if I uh, if I'm wrong, then I'll you know hold my head in shame. I think I think you've you've definitely yeah. Got it, Mikey, but okay, yeah. okay, right then. This is a uh, Dan's cover in uh, Remix Roulette episode two, and we're going to be listening in three, two, one.
gesture Psychosomatic attitude say Break pressure Come play my game of gesture Psychosomatic attitude say Psychosomatic addicts and say Break pressure Come play my game of texture Psychosomatic addicts and say Come Psychosomatic addicts and say Break pressure Come play my game of texture Psychosomatic addicts and say Come Elle's trying to remember the name of the song, isn't she? That that whole that whole time, I was like, I know the song. I know that. Oh my god! I cannot remember the name of the band. I put Radiohead. I don't even think it's Radiohead. It's definitely not Radiohead. Where's the name? I'm I'm gonna kick myself when I know. Oh, you're gonna kick yourself. So that's the end of the podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Someone gonna give us the answer. Uh, I think that was Prodigy. Oh, of course. Yeah. With uh, Firestarter. It's Breathe. It. Firestarter. No, it's, it's called not Breathe. Firestarter. No, Firestarter it's not called Firestarter. Firestarter. It's that. called Breathe. It's called Breathe. Of course it's not called Firestarter. You didn't even say the word Firestarter, in it? Yeah, Firestarter <laughs> is the, the one where it says, I'm a Firestarter. <laughs> oh, and this right, one is that, says is Breathe. It that, is, it, is it that one, is it? <laughs> Hey, I've had I've had a gin, all right. <laughs> when, you, when you were giving us the clues as well, I wrote, <laughs> I wrote Sandstorm. Oh, oh what a I kind of wish I'd thought of that. And then I wrote Rapper's Delight, but that's 80s, not even 90s. It? Early hip hop, yeah. <laughs> but somebody yeah. sampled it. I went totally different. It's not even a dark song at all. It's just a really highly sampled song. Uh, Show Me Love by, is it Robin S? Oh. That's, oh, that is that 90s. It might be late 90s. Yeah, I don't know why. Oh, no, because just... no, there was a new version. It was 2000s and it was 90s, mm. yeah. Dun, dun, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. So Classic. way off. But that was amazing. That, f- I, that I love the fade out at the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I... Can I embarrassingly share my uh, guesses then? I say embarrassingly, that's a spoiler. Um, so originally I put Nirvana when you said November, 96. Is that because November sounds a little bit like Nirvana? But I've just realised that... <laughs> I just realised that Cobain uh, unfortunately left us in 94, yeah, so that was probably. impossible. So then I wrote down Faithless. I don't know if that's 90s, but I mean, Insomnia. That's probably close I just thought, I thought someone dark. might guess that, actually. Mm, I then had uh, AT... ATB, I think it was. Do, do, Till I come. Do, do. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that yeah. was a banger. I really like yeah. that. And then also had the rude as well, Sandstorm. But then when I was so confident that I got it right, I went with Nine Inch Nails. Oh, oh really? 
Because they're a very like industrially sampley sort of dark band, and I think it fit what you said. I don't know if they're around in the nineties actually. Yeah, I feel I like they so. probably yeah, yeah. were. I feel like Downward Spiral might have been around that sort of era. Um and then obviously it kicked in, I was like, Oh yeah, obviously it's prodigy. Yeah. Like and I was really annoyed <laughs> I got it wrong. Like, well it was like the different <laughs> The different One influences, age for music. I guess, was like Such your old school music. hardcore, like pre proto jungle and all that stuff, and that itself takes all like the funk samples from the drums and like samples yeah. from all these old music, and then Keith Flint's like punk vocals on top. So that's the mismatch. Yeah, it make it makes sense now when you say the prodigy sampled Thin Lizzy and Wu Tang Clan. I'm like, yeah, of course it did. Like that that doesn't surprise me. And with Nine Inch Nails, I'm like, yeah, I'm not too surprised, but. Obviously, when I'd had Faithless as my first guest, like I, that didn't really seem right. <laughs> I can't imagine Faithless sampling than Lizzie. That in that intro riff in a major key just works so it, perfectly. It, honestly, I I took the sample and I literally changed one note from like a minor third to a major third. Move one semi yeah. it suddenly went from like dark and evil to just like like children's music, <laughs> just something really jolly. <laughs> yeah, that was so good though because it was still it, in a way of its time. Like it still sounded it like sound it would kind fit of 90s, yeah. in like that late nineties yeah. grunge rock indie. I think kinda. that might be down to the fact that Dan yeah. produces quite a lot of garage, and that was very much a uh, child of the nineties, wasn't it? Yeah, I in suppose a way. so. Yeah, I listen. I listen I know to it's not a, the same genre. I listen but... to a lot of like jungle and garage and stuff, which is old nineties. Also, inhale, <laughs> inhale was yes. just. I don't know where that so posh good. accent came from. <laughs> inhale <laughs> exhale when I was dancing I was doing the exhale exhale and doing a little mouth mouth motion little hand motion to gesture that I would also ask to ask to like you <clears throat> I would also like to ask you I'll keep that in because that was funny I will also like to ask you what made you go for that sort of sound that you went for then and why did you pick that um, song I picked that song because as soon as you said 90s when we rolled the dice last week I was like I want to do Breathe by the Prodigy <laughs> I don't know why <laughs> It just popped into my head and I absolutely love the prodigy. They're absolutely amazing. And then that's like an iconic song of theirs in the nineties. And then you said in a pop style, I was like, yeah, I can still do that. That works. I hadn't really thought about how I was gonna do it yet. And then when you change it to major, that's just <laughs> it goes mental. I don't know. I just really wanted to do a prodigy song in this podcast before we'd even roll the dice. I do remember your reactions last week and you were like, Oh, I know what I'm doing. Oh, I can still that, do it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I can still do that it. was it. Yeah, yeah. That was it. <laughs> Like a checklist, like, yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, right. And then you didn't you, like, do it that night? I started it, yeah. <laughs> so, wow. So, yeah, I started, I didn't really have a plan for how to make it sound like a pop song. I just recreated the drum beat in, like, a in some drums that didn't sound like dance drums and then just played some jolly guitar on it. And it <laughs> jolly. <laughs> jolly guitar. Jolly guitar. <laughs> That's so funny. Like, I'm just mad. Madness. What an evening. What a... Marvellous evening. I've uh, been very impressed by all three. And you probably want to know who the winner is. And the winner is everybody. We all win because Yay! isn't music amazing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do that every time now. I'm going to be like, everybody wins. Cheers, Mikey. Oh, you're welcome. Everyone's a winner. I love this. This is fantastic. What a fun time. But I think it's... Uh... Oh, that was a clue. You probably heard that. Ooh. Time to roll. I think, I think it's time to perform section three which i'm calling the rolls three rolls roll one we pick the decade roll two we pick the genre roll three we pick the twist which can be anything from changing the accent you're singing in to mashing up two songs and this is going to be for our next episode episode three of the remix roulette podcast do we um do we have a wild card this time yeah that's absolutely right let's crack on with that now so we do actually have some uh submissions don't we from our lovely viewers listeners whatever uh you lovely folk out there are um <laughs> dan dan would you like to read the first one please Me? okay <laughs> so we've been sent this one this is incorporate a household object um that was sent in by uh dan from leeds apparently oh brilliant l could you read that second one for me please <laughs> Yeah, uh, this one is to swap dice one and dice two, which is pick a song in the genre and cover it in the style of a decade. And that was sent in by D Smith in Yorkshire. <laughs> D Smith? D Smith? Uh, <laughs> Stay, could you do number three? <laughs> All drums must be beatboxed. That was sent in by Daniel from England. <laughs> uh, I've got use an instrument you don't know how to play. That was sent in by Danny S from West Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> And Dan to round us off. 
<laughs> uh, this I quite like the sound of this one actually. So at least one part of the track must be performed in reverse, and the audio played backwards so that it sounds correct. That was sent in by, by Daniel. <laughs> sorry, I can't even say it. <laughs> by uh, Daniel S. Smith from the UK. Wow. Very good. Funny, they all, they all sound really similar, those names. I wonder why that is. Um, I'm going to roll the dice for this. If it's a six, I'll just roll again. So we've got a two, which is swap dice one and two. So just to explain, in the third roll, if we pick number six, which is a wild card, it will be that rule there, which is swap dice one and two. But we can explain a bit more about that when we've done the rolls. Are we all ready to roll? So, something I, an observation I made, um, which is quite interesting, which means we can keep doing this podcast a long time. It's like even with just the same wild card rule, because there's three six-sided dice, there's 216 different sets of rules that are possible. Uh, how mad is that? Wow. That's cool. Wow. I can't wait till episode 217. <laughs> is that like that thing where you, if you rearrange a deck of cards, there's more variations than there are atoms in the universe? Yeah, it's like there's more than you think, yeah. You're just like... Any permutation of some, it makes a big number quite quickly. And that was science with Steve. <laughs> <laughs> it's maths, isn't it? Yeah, well, same thing, really. It's all connected, isn't it? The universe is correct connected. Just watch the film Pi and you'll understand. Right, so, roll one. Ooh, Steve's going to like this. You're picking a song from the noughties. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, I am happy about that. Roll two, we're deciding on the genre. Dance electronic. <sighs> Great, yeah. So we're picking a song from the noughties and we're turning it into a dance or electronic style. Dan Smith right now is just garage all over, I think. <laughs> Not necessarily. It just means I could make something properly. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen you smile that much ever in my life, genuinely. I've known you for over 10 years and that's the biggest smile I've ever seen from you. <laughs> And then roll three, we're going to decide the twist. No twist! Hey! Okay, yeah, I think that's all right. Hey, that'll do. That's all right. Lovely. Sometimes, you know, you just got to let the song breathe. <laughs> breathe with me. <laughs> breathe by The Prodigy, 1996. So, Number one, hit. <laughs> so we have... We have a... Uh, roll one, we're going to be choosing a song from the noughties. Rule two, we're going to put in that song into a dance or electronic style. And rule three for a twist. The twist is that there is no twist. <laughs> Whoa, dude. Ooh. Wow, that sounded fun. What, what, what a great ending. <laughs> the twist is no twist. Done. Very good. I'm excited. And that is, yeah, that is very exciting. I can't wait to hear, hear what you guys done. I'm sure tomorrow morning I'll wake up to a text from Dan and he'll say I've already done it because Dan is uh, <laughs> super keen like that. <laughs> that's, that's very possible. But otherwise, thank you very much for listening. This has been Remix Roulette. It's been absolutely fantastic. Elle, thank you so much for joining us. Everyone's going to be empowered by that song because it was fantastic. Uh, Steve, you gave a song to by Blur in a very cheesy pop style and that was fantastic. Amazing as always. And Dan Smith ended the night with his fire starter cover <laughs> in The Prodigy. <laughs> Any final words, my friends? Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having me, especially. It was really good. I enjoyed it. Thanks for coming yeah, on. Yeah, big, big, big up to Elle. Yeah. Woo! Thank Elle's you, Elle. incredible. We will get you back Thank on you. in the future. But tune in next time yes. when our mystery guest will be blank. We don't know yet. We're going to ask them after this. I've got a question for you, Mikey. Oh. Where can, where can we find out about new news about this podcast? Is there any social media pages, perhaps? <laughs> oh, Dan, I am so glad that you... No, goodbye! <laughs> oh, Dan, I am so glad that you asked this. Whilst the podcast is on all of your usual streaming platforms, you may also find us at Remix Roulette on the Facebook or at Remix Roulette on Instagram. Feel free to tag us and suggest your wildcard options because we got a lot from this Dan Smith guy. Um, it's a bit suspicious, really. But give us a like, give us a follow, give us a share, and we will see you next time when we roll the dice.